US is experiencing the highest level of inflation since 1981 and rising rates are on the horizon, the issue of price increases is yet again being set on the table for many companies. A product of supply chain issues, labor shortfalls, and material shortages combined with increased consumer demands and an ongoing war in Eastern Europe, let's not forget that, this changed the world as we know it. For the first time in nearly two years, the stock market crossed into bear market territory and that's only in the last couple of months. Finance teams are back to wondering what they all need to do to lead their businesses through more uncertainty ahead. With us today is Jack Alexander, former CFO at EG&G Mercury Computer Systems and an FP&A leader. Hello, Jack. Hello, Guy. Good to be with you this morning. We are now at record levels of inflation. What should FP&A teams be doing now in terms of planning for the future and ensuring the business will make it through? I look at four things, Guy, that FP&A teams should be doing right now, uh, given the situation we're in. The first one is situation analysis. And the second one is to examine how we're projecting and the projections that we have going forward. We're not going to be in a recession, uh, in my view. Uh, we are, the employment rate is still one of the lowest we've had in history. Another one is to track critical assumptions, build a dashboard. And then the other one is to participate in developing mitigating actions or uh, as you suggest, perhaps price increases if those mitigating actions can't be taken. Some businesses may be able to absorb any changes caused by inflation, but for many businesses, especially those with low profit margins, they will have no option but to raise prices. How can a company refrain from doing exactly that? One of the things that we want to do then is examine our projections models and think about uh, whether or not we're reflecting key assumptions and drivers in our projections models. And most finance teams, I asked the question uh, three years ago, just before COVID, making a presentation on scenario planning, 200 people in the group, how many of you are expecting a recession in your plan uh, for the next 12 months? A couple of hands went up. How many are expecting continued economic? A couple of hands went up. How many are expecting expansion? A couple of hands went up. The rest of you, did you not make any explicit assumption about the economy? 90% of the hands went up. And so this is really dangerous. And, and what happens is um, we in finance tend to focus on the internal business model and we're not looking at the external assumptions and the environment. So that's really important because many of these things could have been envisioned. If a company feels that they have no other choice but to raise their prices, what is the best way to do it without damaging their customer loyalty? In terms of price changes, that's very critical, as you suggest, and we may ultimately have to get there. And I, I'd say that uh, from what I can tell, something like 70 to 80 percent of companies are raising their prices, right? One of the things that finance, again, should do in looking more externally is to look at the financial performance and the behavior of our competitors, our suppliers, and our customers. And again, rather than FP&A focusing in on the internal system, there is a vast amount of information guy available in financial reports, especially for publicly traded companies and in industry magazines and things. Rising prices in sectors such as food, housing, and energy, they could all begin to change consumer sentiment. Employees feeling the strain of inflation over time will pressure their employers to raise compensation, which will probably generate higher, longer lasting inflation. So how should CFOs act on this specific matter? Consumer sentiment has already changed in the last 60 days, and it has decreased at one of the most rapid rates and job openings are being withdrawn. Job offers are being withdrawn. There are layoffs occurring again. I think we have to be careful not to um, feed into the inflation and really make thoughtful pay increases uh, and perhaps temporary ones. You know, one very good technique that I've seen is to say, look, we're not gonna build, um, we're not gonna raise your pay by 10% this year because of inflation but we're gonna give you a one-time bonus that effect effectively gets you to that 10% uh, if you stay to the end of the year because or pay it rateably over the next uh, 
uh, six or eight months because we know costs have gone up. What actions or key learnings should a CFO or an FP&A leader take to address for the long term? So the history repeating itself, I started my business career in the 70s. And so um, I saw several periods of inflation, several periods of recession. When I was in high school, I started working at a petrol station, large service station during the, the uh, oil crisis and was literally dealing hands-on with gas rationing and odd and even days that people could purchase gas and long lines, two hour long waits for gas. So that left a, uh, you know, an imprint on me that, uh, that I think I've remembered really throughout my career. So one of the things that we can do um, that I think is really helpful, Guy, that is a big takeaway is to build scenario planning into our thinking and into our projections and planning. And one of the scenarios that should always be included is a wild card scenario or a black swan event. And we might not be able to predict what it is. You know, one year it's COVID, this is inflation, um, but it seems like every seven years, seven to eight years, we have something. Jack Alexander, former CFO at eg and Mercury Computer Systems. Thank you very much for being with us today. I enjoyed it, Guy, thank you.